It was April 15, 1912, the year of our Lord, when the HMS Titanic sank beneath the icy waters of the North Atlantic, taking with it 1,517 lives. The largest and most luxurious ship known to man at the time was gone, reminding the world of our frailty as human beings. But there is more to the sinking of the Titanic than a historical tragedy. There is a story of courageous heroism and unshakable faith. John Harper was aboard the Titanic when she set sail from Southampton, England on her maiden voyage. An evangelist, originally from Glasgow, Scotland, he was well known throughout the United Kingdom as a charismatic, passionate speaker who led many to Christ through his gift of preaching. In 1912, Reverend Harper received an invitation to speak at the Moody Church in Chicago, USA. And on April 11, 1912, John Harper boarded the Titanic. The world was captivated with the ship. Widely proclaimed as unsinkable, it was the largest movable object ever built by man at the time. Some of the wealthiest people in the world were aboard. While many of the passengers spoke of business deals, acquisitions, and material desires, John Harper was diligently sharing the love of Christ with others. In the days leading up to the tragedy, survivors reported seeing Harper living like a man of faith, speaking kind words, and sharing the love of Christ. On the evening of April 14th, as passengers danced in the ballroom and tried their luck at the card tables, John Harper put his daughter to bed and read his devotions as he did every night. At 11.40 p.m., the Titanic struck an iceberg. The unsinkable ship was doomed. Either in disbelief or unaware at the time, passengers continued about their pleasures. It wasn't until the ship's crew sent up a series of distress flares, lighting up the moonless night, that passengers finally realized the seriousness of their situation. Then chaos ensued. It all happened so fast that John Harper could only react. His response left an historic example of courage and faith. Harper awakened his daughter, picked her up, and wrapped her in a blanket before carrying her up to the deck. There he kissed her goodbye and handed her to a crewman who put her into boat number 11. Harper knew he would never see his daughter again, and his daughter would be left an orphan at six years of age. Harper then gave his life jacket to a fellow passenger, ending any chance of his survival. While the light of other worldly ambitions began to flicker and die, John Harper's burned even brighter. As the sounds of terror and mayhem continued, Harper focused on his God-given purpose. Survivors reported seeing him on the upper deck, surrounded by terrified passengers, on his knees, praying for their salvation. At 2.40 a.m., the Titanic disappeared beneath the North Atlantic, leaving a mushroom-like cloud of smoke and steam above her grave, and tragically, over 1,000 people, including Harper, fighting for their lives in the icy water. He managed to find a piece of floating wreckage to hold on to. Quickly, he swam up to every person he could find, urging those about him to put their faith in Jesus Christ. While death forced others to face the folly of their life's pursuits, John Harper's goal of winning men to Jesus Christ became more vital. Soon, John Harper began to succumb to the sea. Even in his last moment, this tireless man of undying faith continued his life pursuit of winning lost souls. I am a survivor of the Titanic. I was one of only six people out of 1,517 to be pulled from the icy waters on that dreadful night. Like the hundreds around me, I found myself struggling in the cold, dark waters of the North Atlantic. The wail of the perishing was ringing in my ears when there floated by me a man who called to me, Is your soul saved? I heard him call out to others as he and everyone around me sank beneath the waters to eternity. There alone in the night, with two miles of water under me, I cried to Christ to save me. I am John Harper's last convert. Harper, as he knew then, would not survive. But his example of undying faith and commitment to the Word of God lives as an example for all to see. In the midst of that desperate assemblage of drowning men, women, and children, 
he pointed them to the cross, and thus, as he lived, died with that one name upon his lips, Jesus Christ.